Hello everyone, my name is Mr. N. Josie. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at adding all the necessary components for you to control and operate your first creation here in Stormworks. Without logic and controls, our creations in game would have no purpose at all. Logic is what brings them to life and what makes them truly amazing to play with. The most important step of any creation is to add the controls and logic in order to drive and operate the creation in the vast world of Stormworks. Let's jump straight into the workbench and see how we can make our creation truly come to life. So now that we're back in the workbench, the first thing that we want to start working with is actually getting some controls in here to actually control this creation. At the moment, we've already got the hull and we've also got the engine in here. The next thing is we're going to need to understand how we can actually go and turn the creation, either left or right. So we can go and add a control surface or a rudder here at the back. Now, when adding a rudder, you have multiple different options. However, if we go and search for a rudder here, you can see we have two different options. We're going to be choosing a basic fin rudder at the moment. As you can see here in the description, it says that if you give it a negative one, it will go in one direction. And if you give it a one, it will go in the opposite direction. So we're going to go and get that connected. And you can see I'm just going to go and place two of them here at the back of our creation. Now that we've got that in, we need to understand how can we actually go and change that? How can we move it left and right? And that's where we come into something called a seat. A seat in game here allows us to add a lot of controls that we control using our keyboard. So for example, when we sit in here, we get access to use W and S, A and D, up and down, left and right, all from our keyboard. So we can start getting everything connected. So for example, we want to control the rudder at the back of the creation. So I'm going to click on the logic option and you'll notice that our seat has a bunch of different logic. You can see here, this is the W and S keys. We'll give you a one if you press W and a negative one if you press S. We also have the up and down, once again, up giving you a one value and negative one being the down. We have A and D, great. So A and D on my keyboard, I wanna go left and right, okay? So A will be negative and positive will be one, cool. Let's go and go and control our rudders. So how did I connect that? Well, all you have to do is click on that node and you can go and drag it and then place it onto where you wanna control it. You'll also notice if you have a look at the arrows, they are facing towards the rudder, which means that data is flowing from your seat to your rudders. The next thing we want to do is we of course want to go and control our engine. Now you'll notice once again our engine also has some controls. It has some inputs and it also has some outputs here. So let's go and add some controls on. Now we could use the controls that we have on our seat. However, we could also go and use some components that we have in our inventory. So just using how here at the front, we're going to open up our inventory. And the first thing we want is we want an option to go and start our creation. Now, there's a lot of different options you can use, but for our example, we're going to use a simple push button that will then get the starter on the engine going. The reason why I'm using a push button is we only need to press it for a few seconds to actually get our start, our engine cranked up and going. Once it's going, it runs on its own momentum. Once we've got the little push button there, we can go and get that connected over to our starter of our engine, simply once again by holding and dragging it. That will then go and start up the engine for us. Perfect. The next thing is we obviously need to go and control the throttle of that engine. Well, once again, you can use a lot of different things. However, for our example, there's a throttle lever, which is a perfect use case for this. We can go and place it down. And you'll notice that if you go back to the logic, this has now got an output of our number, either up to one or negative to one. So we're going to go and put that over to our actual throttle of our engine. That way now at the moment, we're using the push button to turn it on and we're using the throttle lever to go up and down here. Now you can actually configure these buttons even more if you want to. For example, on the push button, we can go and select it and we can write what it does. This way, any player that uses this creation will understand what these buttons are used for. We can go to our throttle lever and we can even define how sensitive it is. So if obviously the higher you go here, the quicker it's going to go to zero or to one or to negative one. And if you go lower, the more granular control you're going to have over the actual throttle itself. Let's put it to about 20%, which should give us a nice granular control. We can also go and choose the minimum value, the maximum value that it's going to send out, and even the starting value that it's going to start off at. 
Engines here in Stormworks only accept a 0 to 1, and we can see that by hovering over the throttle, and you can see standard value between 0 and 1 controls the throttle of the engine. So that's all we need on our throttle here, 0 to 1. Perfect. Now that we've got that, our engine can actually go and turn on. But how do we know it's going to go and turn on? Well, this is where we can start using some dials here in game. We can add a dial and we can tell it to go and show us what is the rotations of that engine. So to configure it, we're going to go back to our logic and you'll see this now has an input. Okay, well, let's go to our engine. You can see our engine's giving us our temperature and also the RPS. Well, that's what we want. We want the RPS. So let's click and drag it and let's put it onto our dial. That will now show us what the RPS value of the engine is. If we want, we can even go and click on that and we can configure it. We can say this is RPS engine and we can go and put a range in here. So I know that the minimum range of an RPS is zero at the moment that we're going to be reading and the maximum can be anything. But if I go into my settings for my engine, I can see the maximum RPS that I'm allowing it to go is to 20. So there's no point to go any higher than 20 on our RPS value here. Perfect. So now we're controlling the actual throttle. We're turning it on, engine on. But there's also the case of a clutch here. We know that the clutch stops power from going across. Well, you'll notice here that we can see that a number between zero and one representing the engagement of the clutch. Okay, so we give it a zero, no power is going through to our propeller. And if we give it a one, the power goes through. So we can get that connected. Now we could use a throttle lever, but I'm going to be using my W and S from my keyboard. And I can access that by going over to my seat and I can see there is a W and S there. So I'm gonna go and click on that and I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna put it on my clutch. Perfect. So now that we have that and we've connected all our controls here, we even got a readout here for our RPS of our engine. We have our rudders here. We've got everything we need. However, nothing's gonna turn on at the moment. And that's because we haven't got any electricity in our creation. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add a battery. So we can go and search for a battery and we can place it on our creation. I'm just gonna place it here at the front just so you can see where it is. We can go and connect all the electricity up for all these different components. And you can do that by clicking on the logic, going to the left here and clicking on electrical. And you'll notice that all of these components that require electricity have the little electric node on them. We can simply go to our battery and start connecting that all up to the different components. Now it is possible to actually daisy chain them and chain them across. So you can see I can go from my battery to my engine, to my clutch, to my gearbox, then to my propellers. You don't have to go directly from the battery every single time. It's up to you. So now that we've got the electricity, we've got all of our logic connected, we can now actually go and test it. To test it, all we have to do is click on the spawn creation. Once we spawn it in, it's gonna appear inside the dock here. And we can see we have our engine, our propeller, our rudders, our seat, our throttle, battery, starter, everything is there. So in order to get the creation started, we can check and see that RPS is currently zero. So let's go and increase the throttle a little bit and let's get the starter on. That should now start our engine and we can see the engine is running. Perfect. We want to keep that as minimal as possible. We don't want it to reach 20 because obviously when it gets to 20, it might start overheating. So we want to lower the throttle there a little bit and we're going to keep it nice and consistent around 19. So now that we have our engine running, we can actually go and jump into our seat to go and control the clutch and also the rudder of our boat. So I'm going to go and get into our seat here and we can go and start increasing our clutch. And to do that, I'm going to use my W on my keyboard I'm going to press W and I can watch my RPS and I can see my RPS has dropped. So I'm going to increase my throttle here to try and fix it. Let's put our starter back on again. And you can now see that we are moving. We're perfectly moving here. We can actually turn our creation using our A and D keys of our keyboard. And we can keep an eye on the RPS. If we need to, we can go and increase it to get a little more speed. And we now are moving. Once again, we can turn left or right as we need to using the rudder of our creation. That's gonna turn us 
And of course, the more gearboxes we add and the more engines we add, we can make it faster and faster and faster. And now that we've gone and tested creation, we know that the engine is working as we intended to do. The clutch is operating, our propeller is moving, and also our actual rudders are moving around too. And our seat and these small little controls here at the front of the creation are doing all the hard work for us. Now, of course, you can get much more in depth with this, and there is a world of different components here that we can go and use to test out and add more complex designs and components and actual logic to our creation but this is a great place to get started with now that you know how to actually go and control your first engine and also actually steer your boat this is the perfect way to get started and you can carry on adding on more and more things from there on now that you've learned how to build your first creation in stormworks it's now up to you to make an incredible creation to take on the world of stormworks don't forget that once you're done with your creation and you're proud of what you built, be sure to go and share it over on the Steam Workshop. Who knows, maybe one day it'll be right here in one of my videos. Now, if you're looking for any more Stormworks related content, be sure to check out my channel for many more videos on Stormworks. Now, as always, I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it entertaining and informative as always, and we'll see you in the next one.